Hey there, comic friends. I'm Travis, and it's time for another edition of Monster Comic Reviews. So this week, as compared to the last last week, this is the first week of December books. I have lots of superhero books and not so many of the no cape books. So that being said, we'll jump right into this into this video and see exactly how long it takes for me to talk about I don't know a dozen or so books. First off. Fearless Defenders issue number 12, the final issue of Fearless Defenders. Uh, another great um, tongue-in-cheek tongue um, cover. Uh, covers one of, the, one of the great things about this book. Um, I want to say it's unfortunate this book ended, but it doesn't surprise me. I, I, I like the idea of the book. I like some of the concepts that happen in the book. I like the characters that are in the book. I don't like the art execution in the book very much at all. I've complained about that many times in the past. I don't like the fact that it jumped up to, um, you know, it jumped up by a dollar. I think that actually hurt the book. I think that discouraged a few people from picking it up and whatnot. Um, I hope we get to see some of these people someplace else at some point. Um, I still think this was a cool idea, um, but I don't know. Uh, you, you know, there, there was a very vocal fan base of this book, but I don't know how much support the book got. And, um, I, I have a feeling that we're going to see all of these female-centric teams that, that uh, Marvel's put out all disappearing fairly quickly, I, I'm thinking. I'm curious to see how long the X-Men book lasts. Um, you know, but we'll see. Um, it was a fine last issue. didn't really have any kind of a real ending to it. Just, oh, it ended. Um, but yeah, um, tease some other interesting concepts that I don't think we'll ever get an answer to. So there's that. Not bad. No, no case series. If you want to read a book that's just all about um, so a large group of the um, female um, heroes of the Marvel Universe, it's, it's probably good for that. Um, but yeah, like I said, the art kind of was a deter for me um, and, and kept it from being a really exciting book for me. Speaking of very unexciting books, um, Batman Superman uh, issue number six. Quite frankly, I didn't finish reading it. I read like the first five or six pages. Decided I was done with it. I just do not enjoy this. I don't enjoy... It's got less to do with the comic being turned on its side. I just... The concept of it doesn't interest me. And um, I, I just... I don't get it. I'm done. I hear that the artist that was on the book before, Jay Lee is, com is coming back to the book. I, I don't care at this point. Um, I thought that we were going to get really interesting stories um, by Greg Peck. Uh, the first four issues I thought were really dynamic and really interesting. And this is just dumb, um, quite frankly. And I don't have an interest in it. So I didn't really read it. So there's that. Book I really enjoyed, um, Suicide Risk, issue eight. Um, things have gone really crazy now. The villains have, have taken over the, the Yucatan Peninsula, basically a large chunk of... of, of uh, South America, uh, they're claiming it as their own country. Uh, Prometheus, uh, Prometheus goes to the United Nations, blows a hole in the side of the United Nations building, and goes, "Look, you're, I'm I'm a new country. You better recognize me." And kind of you know threatens everybody if they don't. And they're all like, "Oh yeah, we'll recognize you for now because we're planning on blowing you up." They're literally flying in stealth bombers to actually blow them and everybody else up if they have to, to get rid of these superpowers. Um, our main character is slowly sliding further into being the person he was before that we've discovered he's before, this person called Requiem. Um, and that's really interesting. He's going to serve, he's going to protect them from this bomb that's being dropped um, in a pretty significant fashion. There's a precog in the group of villains who kind of tells him, hey, try and remember who you are and what your name is. So in case when, when Requiem, now that Requiem is starting to take over, if he doesn't want to leave, hopefully you can use that to force him back. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting. You see where some of those villains land on the whole scale of how villainous are they? Are they as villains because that's the safest place to be right now? And we have his daughter who is, has ripped open a hole into another dimension and has now kind of figured out how to close it. But in the process of closing it, has also been told by this by a creature from the other dimension what her quote unquote hero name is and her hero name does not sound like a hero it sounds like a villain's name so really really interesting uh really really um kind of a cool book i'm really enjoying it it's 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 kind of going all over the place as far as 
you know, venturing off into what is it to be a villain and 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 what would it be like if they got together and actually took over part of a part of the United, you know, part of the world or something. Really, really cool. I'm really enjoying the book. Uh, the Cultist, three of five. Um, this issue, we get to find out that obviously he is that that our main character is getting is getting um, duped. He doesn't realize he's getting duped yet. His detective friend is trying to hunt him down because she obviously has figured out that things are going wrong. Uh, not tons of complicated plot in this. I absolutely love these covers. Uh, the covers have been outstanding for the book. Art inside is pretty solid. Um, but yeah, he's still going on this thrill ride with these new friends that he's found of them basically going to a near-death experience, waiting for their tethers to be severed, and then pulling themselves back from the edge of death. Mistakenly, though, they convince um, they convince, convince the occultists to go all the way. And I guess there's a pack with the sword. The sword is a, is a book and a power that he carries inside of him. There's a pack between heaven, between the living and the dead and the sword that he will never venture into the dead. Well, be playing games with these, you know, with his love interest, he has broken that pack and 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 the dead are coming and they're there for war. So, we got tissues to figure out exactly what's going to happen in this thing as the dead are rising to to cause war on the living because the sore has broke this pack. So, really curious to see how this all squares itself away in two issues and whatnot. It's pretty pretty cool. Um, big yawn. Huh. Earth 2, issue 18, which has nothing to do with the big yawn. Absolutely loving this book. This book is back on my list of being one of my favorite books to read. Super exciting. You got this crazy, you know, Omega Dark Seed Superman and, um, and, and what's going on with him and the Flash trying to outrun him and, and the craziness of that. That was pretty cool. And, um, and you get Batman and what Batman is doing in this book and, and, um, He's trying to release these criminals that have been put in a space field because he feels like they need some of them to survive Superman and survive what's happening. And there's a conflict there because the people who are down there protecting it don't want him to do that. And, and he releases a few, a few interesting people. Uh, this version of Jimmy Olsen is, is pretty magnificent. Um, he releases um, Aqua Girl, I guess, for lack of anything else to call her. Some version of uh, a female Aquaman, kind of a... Very powerful, not Mira, but something else along those lines. I think it's Aqua Girl because she's you know got the darker skin, the darker hair, and whatnot. Um, and then he deals with somebody else. This this Batman, this new Batman, deals with somebody else from his past, not by releasing him, but by by killing, by by shooting him with a gun. Um, really, really wow moment at the end there. And I'm really curious with this Batman. A lot of people are thinking that it's Thomas Wayne that used to be Bruce Wayne's dad, but I don't know. He he does some kung fu arm twisting on the new red tornado in this and she's a robot and i'm assuming she doesn't have ow you're hurting my wrist type feelings and he actually twisted her wrist around and you know could you know put leverage on her like you would a human being and i wouldn't think that leverage would be there for an android so i'm not sure that he's not maybe something else beyond that um something interesting that has been thrown out there is that maybe he is a version of like the evil superman He's the evil Batman, but he's got enough of himself still there to keep from being totally dark, which is an interesting concept. Not sure that's the case, but really, really cool book. Really gotten exciting again. Really enjoying it. Um, unfortunately, Detective Comics is kind of a blasé book. This is issue 26. Um, it's just kind of pedestrianly tells us, finishes off the Man Bat story that they had running in it uh, that's been in the back back um of the issues up until this point and then it, then this book ends on a really weird landing us in the um um oh what's this little mini series that's coming i'm drawing a blank on it it's gothtopia yeah gothtopia bruce gets back to the mansion and he's there i took care of the old man bat thing and he gets you know he gets scolded by by but I'm assuming it's Catwoman. She's like, we're supposed to be partners. I could have come with you. I would have helped. And here's this Catwoman. And she's wearing like half co half Catwoman costume and half Robin costume. So, because it's red and green. And then she has that black coat over. Ah, what the hell? 
And, and then that's it, because the next issue of Detective Comics is going to be Detective Comics issue number 27, and it's going to be the oversized book with all the stories by all these great creators celebrating the fact that, you know, issue 27 of the original Detective Comics was the first issue that Batman was introduced, the character Batman was introduced in. So, what the hell? I don't know. By that, I'm not excited by the Goftopia. That just makes me think that it's going to be a, a crazy mess because they're not explaining in any way what the hell's going on. So, yeah. Something issue 26. Excellent issue. Uh, really excited. Um, Charles Soule has, continues to knock these stories out of the park um, with this whole thing. We've got Cedar is the avatar. So we're kind of seeing things kind of through Cedar's, um, not through Cedar's viewpoint. We can see what the Cedar's doing. But because Alex is now uh, part of the parliament, one of the ex-avatars, he gets to experience everything through um, through Cedar, through Jason Woodrow. So we get to see how Jason got to where he is and why some of the reasons why he is the way he is now and his attempts. He attempts to try and you know immediately prove that he's a badass. He's what he's what the green has always wanted. So he hunts down what he thinks is the avatar of the red, which is Animal Man. Tries kicking the crap out of Animal Man. And Animal Man basically beats the hell out of him instead. Um, and so then he resorts to attacking a a um, a lumber mill in like the Amazon rainforest as as a way of of showing that he's a badass and he's all about the green. Um, but a, but a great story. Uh, interesting to see the to see him about him told in the fashion it's told and it really worked um, as far as that goes. Um, Art is fabulous. Um, Jesus Reyes is, a, is an excellent, excellent artist. He really needs to be on a solid book all the time. This colorist that they don't credit on the front of it. Um, let me look real quick. Because he masters greens and browns really, really well. And considering the fact how many greens or browns are, are in this book, um, he, he should be mentioned and, and credited better than he was. Matthew... Um, Wilson is the colorist, um, just does outstanding job with, with the colors of getting all those hues and making it interesting and stuff. So really excited by uh, Swamp Thing. Everybody should be on Swamp Thing reading it. Um, great stuff. Um, Green Arrow issue 26, the beginning of the Outsiders Wars. I'm excited to see what happens with the Outsider Wars. I'm excited by the fact that they're giving uh, Green Arrow uh, a mythology. They're giving it this kind of martial arts based type of not necessarily for him, but his whole greater thing, this this uh, mythological martial arts kind of thing. That's that to me, that's cool. That that sets him apart from just being a dude with a bow. It gives it more of a I don't know a zen or a or a, a mythical ness to his re, his slice of world. So he's not just a green Batman sheen a bow, bow and arrow, which I think is really cool to make him that. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that DC and, and Jeff Lemire are, are pursuing something like that to make that something that is a cool thing. You know, obviously still not my Ollie, but I'm okay with this. This makes for an interesting story as far as that goes. I am a bit apprehensive. There's a lot in this book though that still feels like to some degree it's pandering to the TV show. The Diggle things in the last issue, um, the 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 heavy presence of um, of uh, the girl in, in that's in Team Arrow having interest in him us going back to the island if we have flashbacky island stuff too much it it's it's treading awfully close to the to the to the TV show and it makes me uncomfortable I like really really like some stuff's going on here the art in it is outstanding uh, 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 Andre Sarantino is Fabulous, fabulous artist. The, the, the book rocks on that level always. Um, but um, I, I'm having a hard time reading it with a little niggle in my head about them flirting too close with the show. So um, maybe it's not, and maybe that's just my kind of tainted worry about it or not. Um, like I said, like the Thalia, um, um, I'd like to see it get farther away from the TV show, uh, but still really excited to see what's going to go on with this whole outsider war and these different clans of these different powers of, of weapons and stuff pretty cool marvel knights x-men uh, issue number two i was kind of hard in issue one because i kind of felt like it was telling me a story i'd seen before um this issue branches off completely into something different um we get some mutants in here with some really really interesting cool dynamic powers which are going to cause them all kinds of crazy chaos going forward 
And um, besides that whole big part of the story, you've also got these guys and this cop running drugs on the side. And, and somebody kind of mentions, you know, look, I'm, I'm capturing mutants and giving you mutants. And in return, you're giving me these super crazy make me high pills. Is there a correlation between the two? And that's kind of a frightening idea. Is it a Soylent Green moment, you know, uh, where the pills have got mutant DNA in them and that's what makes people high? Or I don't know. I'd be curious to find out. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Uh, it's not rocking my socks off like um, uh, like Spider-Man is, but still really, really enjoying it. It's been kind of a fun story and the art's really pretty cool in it. Uh, it's, been, it's, been a good, it's been a good read so far. Curious to see where it's going to go. Then there's, speaking of, uh, Marvel Knights Spider-Man issue 305. Love this book. It is still continues to be just outstanding. The art in it is completely, completely bonkers and smart. Like, this is a submarine that now Spider-Man is trapped on. And, and combat is the title of this issue. And each one of the letters of the word combat is, um, represents one of the people in this that he fights or has to deal with, um, there's some Venom um, scenes in here, some Venom and Carnage scenes that the artwork is just stellar on. Also, the framing of it is just so crazy and 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 dynamic and stuff. I mean, look at these pages where it's the faces of of Carnage and and Venom and stuff. Um, just absolutely crazy, crazy cool. I mean, there's just it's just outstanding really really cool interesting um dynamic rich um book um love it absolutely love it um more please please make more and finally issue 13 of young avengers um we have our final battle here we have our final battle um some stuff gets cleared up uh, we get the exposure of um, of that Loki isn't the real Loki. Loki's kind of a, a hack um, piece of of an older Loki. Uh, we find out that Loki's girlfriend that was left at the beginning of um, creation is actually just a sliver of Loki's powers. Um, Novar ends up being kind of a creep in this, or a douche, or I don't know what you want to call him. Um, treats Kate Bishop fairly poorly. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I talked a little bit with uh, um, a comic book girl about this. I don't know if this issue is kind of a letdown because I know the book is ending, and so it's lost some of its sparkle because of that, because I'm just kind of bummed about the fact it's going away. Or this is the after the climax kind of thing, and, and it's just kind of a letdown in that sense. Um, I think there's two more issues left. I hope it, I hope it kind of not wraps things up. I don't care about that so much, but lands us on on a good feeling, fun place that this book has been largely throughout most of it. Because this this issue, even though they win and there's some cool parts in this, there's some cool um, imagery in it. I didn't feel good by the end of it. Uh, and most of the time, I have. So I'm hoping that gets cleared up. Um, so yeah, that's um, Young Avengers. A couple more issues of it, and then it is done. So that is it for the first week of December's um, Superhero Books. I will see you down the road with more videos. Bye.